Hello everyone, welcome to Tao Academic and today's video wants to look at uh, tourism in East Africa, the beauty of Africa. Uh, we prepare these videos basically for our dear lovely students out there who take this course and the geography in East Africa. I will wish or believe all our efforts are helping you to learn better and enjoy this content and improve on your grades. We want to thank you for those who have been part of the Tower Academic and those who have been able to watch our content, subscribe and make comments. We really strongly and humbly appreciate at this point in time to those who are new to this channel and you have not yet subscribed, please request you to do so and take a little time and go through our content advise us where need be and we promise you shall make improvement so at this time allow us dive into to tourism in east africa as we're saying the beauty of africa basically tourism in east africa we look at different kind of tourist attractions that uh, attract tourists to our region of east africa so let's move in what to cover today we want to look at what is tourism, truth attraction in East Africa, factors for tourism development, contribution of tourism, casted in Kenya's tourism. Why Kenya? Because we, we look at Kenya's tourism industry as one of the most developed compared to other countries in East Africa. And then we're saying problems affecting tourism. We want to look at that. And then the solution to the problems above to cater for that so we move on what is tourism we're saying this is the practice of traveling for the purposes of leisure uh, curiosity and study I don't know what you travel for I don't know how many trips you've taken for which kind of purpose but um, generally people travel for leisure and uh, curiosity uh, less of study, less of study. For example, our friends of botany, zoology, who do make research here and there. So we are saying tourism is the leading visible export of East Africa. And it's one of the major foreign exchange earners for the different governments in East Africa. It's quite playing a bigger role and a bigger part in trying to provide foreign exchange to these other countries in East Africa. Let's look at the tourist attractions in East Africa. What really attracts people to come to this part of Africa? So we're saying basically the number one factor is the wildlife. Uh, East Africa is blessed to have quite a number of wildlife with different kind of animals in different kind of game parks and game reserves as we shall see. So we're saying also climate. We have one of the beautiful climate just we're lying just across the equator and we have we're blessed to have equatorial and tropical kind of climate plus some bit of semi-arid and we we are able to enjoy the sun throughout the year then we're also saying relief uh, we have kind of different kind of relief uh, setups in east africa uh, comprised of mountains uh, lifty valleys lowlands uh, mission them so we have different kind of mountains one being chinemanjalo the highest mountain uh, in East Africa and above in Africa, we have Mountain of the Moon, that's Mount Renzori, uh, Mountain Kenya, mentioned them, and the Great East African Lifty Valley. So that's another area that we see as one of the truest attractions in East Africa. Moving on, we are also saying historical sites is another contributor, a big one at that that attracts different people to come to East Africa and see what is happening. One is the Kasuvi Tombs, the, the, the Fort Jesus, the Odivai Gorge. These are all different kind of t t historical sites that attract people. The other bit is culture. We have one of the diverse culture in East Africa with different kind of tribes. So this also attracts people. The Masai group, the Chiganda group, uh, the Kalenjin group, the Chikuyu group, mention them, the Tusi, the Hutus, mention them. These different cultures are beautiful to see. They end up attracting different people to come to East Africa. We also have drainage systems. Uh, drainage system, under drainage we have different kind of 
Lex rivers, one of them being the biggest and largest lake in East Africa, that's Lake Victoria. And in Africa, we have the longest river in Africa originating in East Africa. So you see how blessed this region is. Uh, we have different kind of rivers, the refugee, uh, different kind of lakes. That's why we have the Great Lakes region lying around the East Africa. We have different lakes. We have Lake Tanganyika, Lake Albert, Lake Malawi, Lake George Mission, quite a number. So this drainage system also plays a bigger role in attracting people to East Africa as tourists. Moving on. Uh, looking at the, some of the game parks and game reserves that we have in a specific kind of country, starting with Uganda, Uganda's game parks and reserves. So we have quite a number of them uh, being on the periphery of the country, some in the western part of Uganda and the eastern part of Uganda. Uh, the largest being uh, the Markshan Falls uh, in, 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 in the north uh, western part of uh, Uganda. And then we have also next to that is the Queen Elizabeth in the south western part of Uganda. And then also have the the the, the, the Buindi Impenetrable, one of our highest selling package of uh, the mountain gorillas found in Windy Impenetrable. Uh, we have Lake Imburo, it's another game park. We find quite different of animals, the zebras, uh, the giraffes, mission them. And then we have Magahinga, uh, Gorilla National Park also. We have the Chibale Forest National Park, we have the Toro Game Reserve, we have the Katonga Game Reserve, Semendiki National Game Park, uh, we also have the Bukora Game Reserve, Pia Upe Game Reserve, Mount Erigon Game Reserve, Kidepo Valley National Park, and Mission quite a number, Mission but a few quite a number of them. So these are some of the game reserves and game parks that we have in Uganda. Moving on, looking at the Kenyans game packs and reserves, uh, they also have quite a number of them. And these are uh, areas where we see the conservation of our life taking place. Uh, we have one, we have the Tsavo uh, game park uh, that is in the southern part of Kenya, the South Kitui National Park, Nairobi National Park, we have the Masabit National Reserve. We also have the Ruhoel National Reserve, Kola National Reserve, uh, Losio National Reserve, Sabitoi National Park, and then we have the South Turkana National Reserve, and then we have the Mount Erigo National Park. Mission, mission, quite a number of them in Kenya. Moving on to Tanzania, uh, we're saying in Tanzania also have the Maharel National Park, Kitavu National Park, that's in the South. Uh, western part of Tanzania and then we have Rugwa Game Reserve that is also Ruha National Park and then Mikumi National Park, Slaus Game Reserve and then we also have the Tilingire National Park and then also have the Serengeti uh, National Park with quite a different 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 kind of uh, animal species and uh, plants and vegetation in all these game parks. Moving on to Rwanda uh, we also have Nkangera National Park and then Volcanoes National Park. Then we also have the Nyungwe Forest uh, Reserve and many others. Then Burundi, we also have some of the game parks and game reserves uh, shown on the board there. Uh, moving on. So we want to look at the factors that favoring the development of the tourism industry in East Africa. The region is endowed with a variety of tourist attractions such as wildlife drainage features as we just seen earlier and the historical sites. All these are contributing to the growth and development of the tourism industry in East Africa. Number two is the peace and stability especially in Kenya and Tanzania and some parts of Uganda where we see peace that has really contributed to growth and development of the tourism industry in East Africa. Uh, the other one is improvement in transport sector and uh, system especially roads waterways and many others that facilitate the movement of trust to areas of interest for example the game parks and uh, the historical sites uh, the other one is increased level of adver adver advertisement to outside countries being done through embassies abroad 
uh, through international medias and uh, internet and websites and magazines trying to, to, to sell the country out there and this African region at large with the kind of tourist attraction that we have and the potential and the tourism in East Africa using advertisement that has also really contributed to the growth and development of uh, the tourism industry in East Africa. Uh, looking at the other point is the hospitality of our people in East Africa, the welcoming people. So we tend to have fond memories of the tourists who come over here. They, they, they feel like they want to come back over and over because the way how the local people welcome them. Uh, we're also saying improvement in accommodation facilities. We're really trying to improve. And uh, as we speak now, we're having quite a number of five-star hotels and uh, four to five-star hotels, good uh, resorts that are trying to provide at least modern kind of accommodation to our international tourists and local tourists. Uh, increased level of education given to local people has created more awareness and uh, appreciation for the tourism industry. So we are saying uh, earlier people never appreciated the beauty, uh, conserving, and then promoting tourism. But through continuous sensitizing, uh, through education, with some of uh, kind of uh, teachings that we are doing even right now, these kind of videos are helping people to appreciate that tourism really plays a bigger role in East Africa and particularly in different countries in East Africa. So this has also contributed to the growth and development of tourism in East Africa. The other one is presence of adequate capital for local and foreign individuals to invest in the sector. As we say, uh, one is the transport sector needs to be invested in, accommodation to, uh, conservation, uh, the Zua, uh, Rhino is doing good work. So all this, we, we are looking at it as something that needs money, that needs capital to be invested in. And we're saying this adequate capital is coming in from the foreign investors and also the local investors has really contributed the growth and development of the tourism industry in East Africa. Favor of government policy which encourages investment in tourism, for example, liberalization of the trade sector, low taxation and increased subsidization of investors to the tourism sector. We're saying all this is geared to seeing that there's a growth and development of this sector in East Africa. And the other point being uh, the skilled uh, labor. As we speak now, different courses have been put forward to see that we train our local uh, people to see that they really provide some skilled labor to the industry. Having seen that, allow us dive into now the importance of this sector to East Africa as a region. Number one, tourism is an invisible export, as we earlier said, which earns these governments quite a number of foreign, uh, foreign exchange used for different uh, developments of infrastructures, for example, roads, hospitals, schools, market centers and many others. So we're saying this has boosted the growth and development of the East African region. Then we're also saying tourism has contributed to international relationships with uh, people who come in, the international tourists who come in to, to the region. We see some growth of international relationship between countries that come to visit and us the, as the region that welcomes them and hosts them. We're also saying it has helped us to protect our heritage, protect and conserve our environment uh, through now gazetting the national parks uh, so that we preserve this beauty that attracts different tourists to come to our region. We're saying also it has also created employment opportunities to different people in East Africa where we can see different employment opportunities generated for example the tour guides uh, the game rangers uh, the hotel managers and the hospitality uh, industry uh, the, 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 um, the drivers mention them uh, we, we're saying this is also helping our local people to earn a living and this is greatly improving their standards of living next we are saying 
it has facilitated the development of infrastructure like roads, as we talked on earlier. We said this earlier that roads leading to such areas, the game parks, the historical sites, or the tourist attraction areas, we see roads being developed geared to transporting these people to these areas. Hence, developing the infrastructures in terms of roads in the region as East Africa. The revenue generated through taxing people who work within this tourist industry and actually the packages that we do uh, pay off. This has also created more revenue to the economies of East Africa, hence boosting the, the development and growth of East Africa as a region. Next has led to the development of art and craft industry. Uh, if you moved around these tourist uh, sites and game parks, you'll find that we have different kind of uh, art and craft shops owned by local people selling the beautiful art and craft that we make in this region. So it's, 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 it's also contributing to earning or income to the local people out there near these game uh, parks and uh, tourist uh, sites. It, it's, it, it's, it's creating more of an income generating venture. We're saying also it helps to diversify the economy to avoid just relying on one sector. For example, uh, East Africa has agriculture as one of its backbone uh, sector that lies on. So we are saying if tourism is coming on board, it is also providing another avenue for East African region to generate more income, just not only depending on one sector. So basically that looks at some of the importances of uh, the tourism industry in East Africa and much more and much more as we shall see. Moving on, we want to look at, dive into in and look at the case study of uh, Kenya, tourism industry in Kenya. Why in Kenya? We tend to see the tourism industry in Kenya being much more developed than other regions why and these are the factors we want to look at so reason why kenya's tourism is more developed than that of other east african countries so we are saying kenya is a little endowed with a variety of beautiful sceneries in form of coastal landforms uh, volcanic features as well as coastal towns like mombasa which attracts many tourists compared to these other east african countries uh, we also saying kenya has had a longer period of political stability uh, which has attracted more tourists than Uganda and Tanzania. So such a uh, conducive environment has really given Kenya an edge in terms of uh, attracting different tourists into its country. And we are also saying Kenya has various national parks and game reserves like several national parks that are well distributed throughout the country, hence attracting a large number of tourists we're also saying Kenya's national parks are blessed with many well-trained guides uh, uh, who encourage motorists to go to Kenya, as in providing skilled labor and uh, their hospitality industry is well developed. So because of uh, the skills, uh, because of the skilled kind of labor that they do have. So we're saying Kenya also lies along the coast of East Africa, which is easily accessible uh, by the tourists from Europe and Asia. USA compared to Uganda being a landlocked country. So this has given Kenya a bigger strategic positioning uh, to get more tourists compared to a landlocked country like Uganda. We're also saying that uh, Kenya has a well-established hotel industry that is well managed and services are high standards than any other East African country. Uh, that is a plus for them for sure and say a plus uh, they have well established industry sector uh, hotel industry sector with quite a number of five star hotels compared to any other East African country that is also giving them a plus that's why we see their tourism sector a little more developed than any other in East Africa the government of Kenya through the Kenya tourism development corporation ensures strict wildlife conservation programs and laws which ensures continuity of the activity in Kenya. So we see this contributing to the development of the tourism industry in Kenya compared to 
other countries in East Africa. We're also saying Kenya has a well-developed transport sector. Uh, in terms of roads, they've just constructed their standard gauge lady, uh, which is putting them on another level compared to the two East African countries that have not yet reached that level. Uh, apart from Tanzania, which has also just finished this, uh, has compared to Uganda, which is just to start. So you look at the development in terms of transport, Kenya a little being on another level compared to these other East African countries. That's why we see that uh, it is also boasting with a high number of tourists. A lot of research is carried out by the Kenyan Tourism Development Corporation in terms of checking the population of animals. So the research that they do is contributing to their database, which is uh, helping them to know what they have. And then uh, marketing becomes a little easier compared to other countries which don't do much in terms of this. We're also saying Kenya introduced a new system of travel known as a package holiday since 1970, which ensures that tourists are given subsidized rates, hence attracting many and more tourists in their country compared to other East African countries, which are just coming on board to see or do what Kenya is doing. So that's why we are seeing a well-developed sector of tourism industry in Kenya compared to other East African countries and many other factors, a few that have been given here. Moving on. What problems are facing this tourism industry in East Africa? We have quite a number of them. It's not a smooth ride that we're doing well. No, the quite a number of problems that we have in the tourism industry in East Africa. Number one being poaching. We have people taking and killing animals uh, for just simple horns, ivory, for, for money. And we've lost quite a number of animals due to poaching, uh, reducing a number of animals in game parks, which is killing our tourism industry. So we need to really say no to poaching because it is reducing the phonic thing that we would have. And if we continuously kill and poach these animals. The other point is inadequate supply of skilled manpower. We have just talked about this. Uh, most of our hospitality industry is not well trained in terms of uh, handling international tourists and uh, managing these hotels and resorts and game parks and we are not yet there so we are trying our level best to really uh, uh, provide skilled labor through different courses and universities. Number three is inadequate capital for investment to set up roads. We still have a challenge in terms of capital to develop the tourism industry starting from the game parks going to transport routes and sectors, moving on to accommodation, and above all, also the hospitality industry at large. So we need capital to do this. And uh, one of the biggest problems we have is that we are lacking this. It is in short supply. So that's the biggest problem we are having. To advertise all this, we need money. Our political instability is in some parts of East Africa is also affecting us. For example, next to Congo, uh, western part of Uganda, we still have some political instability around that area. Uh, here and there we get some political instability, strikes here and there, uh, political go governance problems. So this kind of instability is really chess away tourists and this is a big problem to our tourism industry in East Africa. Others being um, uh, hostile tribes in East Africa. Earlier alone we had some hostile tribes. The Maasai, as we speak now, it's a little better. The Karamajongs really, they used to scare away people. Their behavior, this, this is not good for the industry. So. But as we speak, we are improving. We're moving on well, slow but sure. Low levels of advertisement, as we have just said earlier. Uh, we have not done much in terms of advertisement of what we have. Uh, you can see other countries doing really well. Dubai can advertise really well. So 
we need to do much more bigger than that in advertisement so that we expose what we have next is high population growth rate which has resulted into increased demand for land leading to encroachment of this uh, wildlife conservation areas and habitats for animals hence reducing on the tourist attraction in terms of wildlife so this is really also affecting the tourist, uh, tourism sector in East Africa uh, lastly is uh, the pests and diseases uh, for example, the sesa flies, uh, mosquitoes scare, a little scare away, scare away these tourists. Also, it causes a little worry to international tourists who come in to visit. I'm told every time a tourist, international tourist is coming to Africa, he has to take uh, a vaccine for yellow fever, malaria, uh, and many others. Such things are really hindering the growth and development of this industry in East Africa. So basically those are some of the problems that we see that are affecting our tourism industry. Having seen the problem, now what are the solutions to the problems above? One, eviction of encroachers and reduction of human settlement within the surrounding of the game reserves and game packs to reduce on poaching that is being done by different governments and different tourism boards and sectors and ministries in East Africa setting up of and poaching squads to reduce on poaching to increase animal population that is also being done across the East African countries the government has also uh, improved on uh, the accessibility to these tourist centers by constructing different roads improving the roads and accessibility uh, ledger patrols and supervision should uh, is also being done to protect the animals from poachers in the game reserves and uh, game parks across these east african uh, countries we're also saying we are increasing and putting more money in advertisement you have seen rwanda using the shots of Arsenal as a football club with Rwanda. Uh, you've seen different uh, tourism packages on Al Jazeera, Kenya doing that, Uganda doing that in CNN, on CNN, and different websites and magazines and different tourism ambassadors uh, of different countries. Uh, educating the local people about the values of wildlife, environment conservation to reduce on the level of poaching, and uh, deforestation plus the vegetation and encroaching on the wildlife so this all is being done in schools universities colleges uh, mass media campaigns it's being done to see that we we see an improvement in this the government should also fight corruption uh, in the ministries in terms of tourism and other ministries uh, that's really causing improper management of this tourist sector in east africa so that we curb on the poor vices that are seen in the tourism industry for example poaching uh, taking away of animals uh, uh, and also uh, encroaching on the game reserves so all this is being done to see that we s we solve the problems that are affecting tourism in east africa and many others I want to say thank you for being part of this lovely lesson and video. Uh, leave a comment if you have any question. I'll be glad to respond to.